So for tonight, we are reviewing the conditions and restrictions for a freight yard, freight terminal, transshipment depot facility that may locate within the uh, building that was also approved at the March 23rd meeting on the property. So potential uses for this property to re refresh everybody's memory include the light industrial manufacturing warehouse and distribution uses that are allowed by the code. Uh, although we don't have any tenants that have been announced so far, up to four tenants can be accommodated. And we have looked at the site and building plans that were approved for the uh, facility back at the March 23rd meeting. And again, this will be for 24 seven operations. And if we turn to the conditions at, and restrictions, um, if you turn to page two of five under section three, we'll begin with A, and that specifies that the uses allowed on the property will be limited to those allowed by the zoning district, the Oakview Business Park PUD, the conditions and restrictions and plans approved at the March 23rd meeting, as well as everything approved by code. Um, under B, this is a specified um, restriction for the PUD, or I'm sorry, for the CUP. There shall be no parking or storage of vehicles, equipment, merchandise, parts, or supplies within the designated public and employee parking areas. Outdoor storage shall be limited to the parking of trucks and trailers associated with the business and shall be located in designated loading dock areas and stripe stalls on the north portion of the property. There shall be no storage of unlicensed, non-operational vehicles, equipment, merchandise, parts, supplies, or any other materials. Basically restricting outdoor storage to trucks and trailers only. Under section 4B, this is specifying that trucks utilizing the property will not be allowed to turn left or go west on Oakwood Road. And this is something that has been carried over from a previous conditional use permit for Oakview Business Park. Under section six, that's specifying the building and parking setbacks per the PUD. Under section seven, we have time of compliance and that is for the, uh, the establishment of the conditional use within 12 months of the date of the adoption of the approval ordinance and that is by the common council. And the duration of the conditional use permit in section eight is for 10 years for, uh, from the date of approval by the common council. If there are no further questions with the conditions as proposed, there is a suggestion motion for approval on the screen. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Carrie. Uh, Tom, do we have anybody in the queue with us? Mr. Mayor, we have Nick tonight. Oh, we have Nick. Okay. And we're live now too, just letting you know, sorry. Oh, thank you very much, Nick. Nick, do we have anybody wishing to speak on item 5A? Yes, uh, Brian Reynolds raising his hand. Uh, please put Brian on. Brian, you can talk. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, members of the Plan Commission. Good to be with you once again. This is Attorney Brian Randall of Davis and Kielthau, 111 East Kilbourne Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53202, here on behalf of HSA Commercial Real Estate and Eric Ogden, the applicant. This evening, uh, I'm not going to give an overview presentation. I appreciated the opportunity last month to do so, and Carrie summarized everything uh, as we've presented. We've had the opportunity to review the conditions and restrictions and certainly appreciate the opportunity collaborating with staff on yet another project. We do not have any issues or concerns with the document that's in the packet and that Carrie just highlighted at least the site specific issues related to that. So we would appreciate your support and we look forward to the next steps before the Common Council. Happy to answer any questions though that there may be. Great, thank you, Brian. Um, Nick, is there anyone else beyond uh, Mr. Randall? No, not currently. Okay. Um, we will uh, take it to the commission then, uh, starting with Commissioner Hanna. Any questions, comments? Uh, no, nothing here. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Sullivan? I have nothing. Thank you. Commissioner Carrillo? Nothing for me. Alderman Lorick? No questions. Thank you. Alderman Guzikowski? Uh, nothing for me, thank you. Commissioner O'Danny? Nothing, thank you. Okay, Commissioner Siepert? No questions. And Commissioner Chandler? No questions. Um, I have none myself either. Uh, very well done by staff and 
uh, appreciate the work with the client. So uh, there's nothing further. We will take a motion on 5A. Seepert moves that the Planning Commission recommends that the Common Council adopts the conditions and restrictions as part of the condition use permit for freight yard, freight terminal, transshipment depot facilities within the proposed multi-tenant building on the property at 150 West Oakview Parkway. Chandler, second. Uh, roll call, starting with Commissioner Sullivan. Sullivan, aye. Brillo, aye. Lorik, aye. Bukavich, aye. Guzikowski, aye. Aldani, aye. Tapert, aye. Chandler, aye. Hannah, aye. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, item 5B, again, conditions and restrictions. Uh, we will review con and consider conditions and restrictions. Uh, again, a request by Eric Ogden. Uh, this time it is for a, a freight yard, freight terminal, transshipment depot, but the property listing is 10551 South Oakview Parkway. Carrie? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This again was reviewed and recommended for approval at the March 23rd meeting. Same request. The only difference is that site and building plans were not presented at the same evening's uh, meeting for review. They are forthcoming. A few minor adjustments are being made to the site plan and the building plans for review at a future meeting. Uh, the potential users have not been announced at this point, but they are built, they are constructing, I'm sorry, they are designing the building for uh, up to four tenants that can be accommodated. Uh, right now, they are showing 22 loading docks, um, potential drive-in doors and 12 stalls between the docks, similar to what was shown at 150 West Oakview Parkway. Um, but again, these are currently in development and will be presented for plan commission review at a future date. So if we turn to the conditions and restrictions themselves under section three, A and B are exactly the same as the conditions and restrictions for 150 West Oakview Parkway. Um, same with under four, section four B, that is the truck restriction for Oakwood Road. Uh, building and parking setbacks are also the same per the PUD. If we go to section seven, however, time of compliance, this is the standard language and code for 12 months to establish uh, Gary, the- I'm gonna, I'm gonna step away for about three, four minutes. I got something going on here, I'm all by myself. So I will step away from the meeting for just a couple minutes. Chris, if you would just take over until I return. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Um, so time of compliance, the request is for up to 36 months to establish the conditional use. And that's recognizing that the site and building plans are still in development. Um, the duration of the conditional use permit is still proposed to be 10 years from the date of approval. But if we talk about the time of compliance, uh, 36 months is actually a bit longer than we normally see for these conditional use permit establishment um, timeframes. Typically, those longer time frames are coming into play whenever there is a phased de development. Um, staff is willing to suggest a compromise of perhaps maybe 24 months um, and have the language tied to site and building plan review, as well as issuance of building permits. Now, issuance of building permits is already kind of built into that time of compliance section, but we can wordsmith something, um, making sure that the conditional use permit is tied to the review and approval of site and building plans for the specific property as well. So that's a topic of, con of consideration for the plan commission to discuss. Um, and with that, there is a suggested motion for approval on the screen. Mr. Chairman. Um, all righty. Thank you, Kerry. Um, let's start with the uh, commissioners. Um, Let's see, I think we started uh, with uh, Hannah, Commissioner Hannah last. So, uh, Commissioner uh, Sullivan, anything? I have no comments. Thank you. All righty. Commissioner Carrillo? Nothing for me. All righty. Alderman uh, Lark? Uh, no, thank you. I don't have any questions on this item. Okay. 
Uh, Oldani, Commissioner Oldani. No, I have no questions. All righty, Commissioner Seepert. No questions. And then Commissioner Chandler. I do have a question for Carrie. In regards to the time of compliance, I know in the uh, paperwork that we received, it shows 12 months. So is the recommendation to change it to 36 or 24? Is the, re the request is for 36 months. Oh, that's the and that is for plan commission consideration. Staff is recommending an alternative of 24 months and language that would tie this to the site and building plan review as well as to the issuance of building permits. Again, that issuance of building permits language is currently within there. Um, there would just be some minor tweaks to that language uh, to recommend that there would be, um, again, that requirement for site and building plan approval by the plan commission before they can proceed to building permits. And then the building permit itself, um, the establishment of the conditional use would occur within, I think it's the 24 months from the date of issuance of a permit. Thank you, Carrie. And I also have a question for the applicant or the applicant's representative. Okay. So I just wanted to get a little more information on uh, why there was a request to change this from what's noted there, the 12 months to 36 months. Thank you. Can you all hear me? I think I've been unmuted. Yes. Thank you again. This is attorney Brian Randall of Davis and Kielthal, 111 East Kilbourne Avenue, Milwaukee, 53202 here on behalf of the applicant HSA commercial real estate and Eric Ogden. And I'm happy to respond to that and appreciate the plan commission considering our request. So as Carrie explained from staff's perspective on typically sometimes these being phased developments and, and maybe having multiple buildings and, and multiple years needed for the construction. That in many respects is exactly what the situation is here. If the plan commission remembers HSA a year ago had before you the approval for 102 West Oakview Parkway, which is just to the east and right along Howell, Moments ago, we just had the 150 West Oakview Parkway, the next building that admittedly these are speculative buildings that HSA intends to build them and actively market them for the tenants and then fill the building with the tenant. The third building, and as I mentioned last month, because we were filling out all this paperwork, because we know what the standards for the zoning are and to be efficient and, and considerate of everyone's time, we brought this 10551 building forward, knowing though that we didn't have the site and building plan level of detail quite ready. That is a significant investment of time and, and architectural money. So we brought that forward, at least for the conditional use and all the other conditions and restrictions we have no issue with, but we would like to have a little bit more lead time and the request we made was 36 months before any type of obligation for pulling a building permit would be required. We know we still need the site and building plan approval through this plan commission. And, and we appreciate as Carrie has explained it, those are forthcoming, they're in the future, but the reality is they're probably a year in the future or so. Of course, if a tenant calls upon us and, and is ready to have us build the building, we'll do it immediately after we get your approval. But the reality of this one is it's the third phase of a third major investment that HSA is making in the Oakview Business Park and, and yet again in the city. And so our request is for the 36 months. I think hearing how Carrie's presented it, the wordsmithing, we can probably work with staff on how long the shelf life is for say a building permit and the conditional use. And we recognize the 10 year duration. We're not having an issue with that but it's just, we don't want to artificially have to pull a building permit and, and build a building we're not quite ready to. And that's why we requested 36 months. I know it was a long answer to the question, but I appreciate the opportunity to just give some perspective on that. Thank you. Did that uh, answer your questions, uh, Commissioner Chandler? Yes, it did. Thank you, Alden. Okay. 
Uh, so it looks like we need to come up with a motion and, and an agreement uh, with uh, commissioners on on the time of compliance here. So everyone have a fever, uh, feel one way or another, uh, whether it's uh, 12, 24 or 36 months. Just one interjection. Just to reiterate, staff was comfortable with 24, am I correct? Um, when I popped back, I think I caught that. Yes, Mr. Mayor, uh, staff has presented 24 months as a compromise. Okay. Any comments regarding 24 months? I would be good with the 24 months myself. I agree, I would support staff's position on 24 months. And I agree with the 24 months. Uh, just one quick comment. I don't know if we heard from Commissioner Hanna. Uh, I, I'm not sure I missed that part. Uh, Christine, do you have questions, comments? Sorry. Uh, that's what I was trying to say. I got skipped for, for a second here. So, uh, um, um, yes, I had the same questions as uh, Commissioner Chandler and I would really support the 24 months versus the 36. I was actually gonna go with 12, but 24 would be generous enough. Okay. Okay, Chris, thank you for taking over the joys of uh, and the difficulties of doing Zoom out of your home, I guess, sometimes. Yes, sir. Unforeseen circumstance. Um, yeah, I myself, I would, I would support staff at 24 as well. Mr. Mayor, and there was a question about length of building permits, um, yes. how, what their valid time period is. Building permits are generally um, effective for two years. Now, there may be some caveats to that, but um, what we would probably recommend here is that site and building plans be submitted for review and approval by the plan commission. Um, prior to submission of building permit applications. And as far as issuance of a permit is concerned, uh, the issuance of a permit would be within 24 months from the date of adoption. So once that building permit is issued, and the it would be valid for two years. Okay. So they, have a, they, they can actually buy a little time on the front end by not getting them right away, so to speak. Essentially, they'd have a little bit more time to get those per those plans in order before submitting for building permits. Um, and they can submit for building permits almost immediately after getting plan commission approval, as long as they meet the, the conditions of those plan commission uh, approvals. So the 24 months is still getting them to where they need to be in terms of plan commission approvals, and issuance of a building permit. And then again, construction can last for two years or that building permit can be valid for up to two years. Now we can confirm that, but that's generally the time frame that building permits are, are valid. Right. And you know, I know it's been taking a little longer at the state and I know Assistant Chief Havies with us as far as fire plans go, is it getting better on that end, getting fire, fire plans approved? Well, good evening, Mr. Mayor, Commissioner. Uh, as far as uh, uh, plan reviews and submittals, uh, timelines, um, we don't see any issues on um, timelines uh, with the suggested motion. Okay. Okay. Um, I think Chris had put this up for motion and, and unless there's further discussion, I don't mean to cut anybody off. Uh, just a quick question, Mayor. I do yes. want to ask if any of the residents have any questions. Um, yes, are there any re any residents in the queue? Were there any? Are there any? Nobody currently has their hand raised. Okay, thank you, Nick. There's one person calling in. Um, if you wish to speak, you can hit star nine. Doesn't seem like it. Okay. Okay, with that, um, We'll look for a motion. 
Guzikowski makes a motion that the plan commission recommends that the common council adopts conditions and restrictions as a part of a conditional use, uh, conditional use permit for a freight yard, freight terminal, transshipment depot facilities within the proposed multi-tenant building on the property at 10551 South Oakview Parkway. Carrie, do I need to add in the um, time of compliance of 24 months? No, it will be reflected as the discussion has uh, progressed. So for common council approval, that language will be wordsmith for 24 months. Okay, then that's my motion. Secret seconds. Okay, uh, roll call starting with Commissioner Carrillo. Carrillo, aye. Lorik, aye. Kavich, aye. Guzikowski, aye. Aye, aye. Paper I. Chandler I. Penna I. Sullivan I. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Randall. Uh, appreciate it. I do think your night is is over here in Oak Creek. So, be well. Um, item five C is a certified survey map uh, submitted by Jim Kane for Truck Country, uh, and it combines the property in ninety nine seventy. Uh, 120 and 140 South 20th Street, Carrie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The proposal is to combine the properties and they are currently zoned M1. They are part of a PUD and we are working with the applicant uh, to work through those issues prior to submission of site and building plans for plan commission review, which are forthcoming. We also have a dedication of the public right of way terminating in a public cul-de-sac on the property. That is part of the CSM. And this configuration does reflect the recommend recommendation for the official map amendment that the plan commission had previously reviewed and recommended for common council approval. And that hearing is scheduled for May 4th. So if this is recommended for approval, both those items would be on the May 4th agenda for council consideration. If there are any changes that are recommended for tonight's meeting, that would also be incorporated into that certified survey map. On the screen right now is the proposed map. This is sheet one of many. Um, we are only gonna be talking about the graphical portions of the certified survey map this evening. And right now is the, on the screen is the overall uh, parcel showing that combination, the cul-de-sac termination and an easement with wetlands. Um, there are two easements actually that are shown on here, one for utilities and one for an existing billboard. And right now on the screen is that easement detail for uh, the billboard. Um, you will note in the conditions that there is not support for the maintenance of this uh, billboard. There is a proposal that is in the, um, the forthcoming site plan that we have seen at a staff level that mentions a moving those billboards to the Southern part of the property. Um, that will likely be a discussion item for tonight as well as in the future as to whether or not the easement for the billboards needs to be moved, amended, or removed. On the screen right now showing those wetlands also including the easements. Um, the easement on the west side of the property is that utility easement that we spoke about and the easement that kind of runs through the center of the property is for the existing billboard location. You will notice that Ridgeview Drive does terminate at the northern portion of the property. There is no proposed connection to Judith Place in the certified survey map. Also, there is no condition, there's no connection to 20th Street per that official map amendment that was reviewed uh, by the Plan Commission and recommended for council approval. That's part of that uh, hearing scheduled for May 4th. With that in mind, there is a, su a suggested motion for approval subject to conditions that are on two pages. Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Carrie. Um, before we go to the commission, uh, Carrie had alerted us that there are some residents wishing to speak on it. Keep in mind, this is a certified survey map issue, so we really won't be getting into details of the building or any layout such as that. This is really just a realignment of the board. So, um, Nick, if anybody would, uh, resident would like to speak, please put them through. Apparently, no. Oh, okay. 
There's three hands raised. We'll start with Brian real quick. Okay. Here comes one. Brian. Oh, Brian, this is yours. And I dismissed you for the night, Brian. I jumped the gun. You can't get rid of me <laughs> that easily, Mr. Mayor. Um, thank you. Uh, this is attorney Brian Randall, third time again. Um, thank, thankfully, MATC is on the agenda, so I didn't monopolize everything this evening. But I'm still an attorney with Davis and Kielthau. I'm still at 111 East Kilbourne Avenue, Milwaukee, 53202. But this time, I'm appearing on behalf of Truck Country, the owner of the site and applicant. Uh, I guess I put my hand up faster than Chris Johns of Epstein Ewan, but our architect is also on and registered as a speaker. And I believe Jim Kane from Truck Country uh, are, is also registered and, and on. Uh, briefly, this is a multi-step project and a multi-step approval process. And I appreciate how Carrie explained where we are in the process. And yes, the official map amendment was before this body before and still has to go to the Common Council. But the certified survey map is a very important step, even if, as you said, Mr. Mayor, it's not necessarily related to the building or the site development. It's an important step because it combines the three separate parcels that exist right now and make it a developable parcel to address setbacks and property ownership and things of that nature. But even more important, the various dedications to the public and the commitments that we're showing uh, that are on that CSM which means that the cul-de-sac will be built and made permanent. And, and frankly, we're absorbing that on the property we own and then dedicating that to the city. As well as Carrie pointed out, we are not proposing any type of connections, any access to the neighbors to the south or looping through that would affect other property owners to the north. So there's no 20th Street connection. There's no Judith Place connection. Frankly, all those references on there are existing conditions that the city staff had us put on there, but we do not, there it is, um, we do not propose to have access to Judith Place. And when we are able to show our site plan, everyone will see that there's substantial landscaping in that area and there is no access point to what truck country proposes. The... I, on that point, I, I think having heard that there are a number of neighbors on and, and remembering the discussion with Alderman Guzikowski, I think it might be beneficial for everyone if we coordinated through the Alderman to have a public neighborhood meeting of some sort, whether it's virtual or, or on, in person, somehow, some way. As I mentioned, we have multiple steps in this process and we're very proud of the planning we've done and, and we know it has to be done carefully but we certainly are willing to make sure everyone has an opportunity to ask their questions, have our answers, and, and we have that benefit. So I think, uh, Mr. Mayor, and, and through Alderman Guzikowski, we have several weeks here where we're still going through the process, and, and we will certainly make that effort through him if, if that would be amenable to everyone else. Having said that, the one issue that we'd like to address tonight, and again, I may defer to Chris Johns or others if, if there are other details, but it does relate to the billboard and that is shown on the screen right now. And once again, the CSM shows an existing condition. So Truck Country bought this property, which is vacant. It has a billboard on it right now. I think it's a clear channel billboard. And my client, Jim Kane, shared with me the title information they have from when they bought it. And it's a packet, 50, 60 pages, some very old documents. I am working through those right now with a colleague. The challenge we have is that's a contract. It's an easement. It's a contractual and legal right that the billboard owner has to place that on the property we now own. We didn't agree to it back in the day, but it's something that we bought that encumbers our property. For those lawyers out there, the, the bundle of sticks is what the property law professors talk about. And it's one stick we don't have, the full unfettered right to use our Eastern property line because this easement burdens that. So in a way we are united in interest with staff, we'd like to find a way to eliminate or at the very least relocate the billboard, but we're not able to do that right now because it's a contract that's binding on us. And so we are gonna work through that and our site plan will show what our intent is at the very least we want to relocate it so that we can maximize the development potential of this site 
which in turn maximizes the taxable value for the city. And so our interests are very united in, in many respects, but we ask that condition number three be removed at this point because it's a commitment, it's a condition that we cannot fulfill right now. And, and we don't wanna have it be a non-starter or the death to a good project at this early stage um, when we really can't even control that at this point. We'd be happy to answer questions, but that's the story behind the billboard. We're working on it. But if this is a condition that we have to fulfill, uh, it's a project that can't move forward because we don't have control until we really review that contract and see if there's a way that we can work around it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Brian. Um, Nick, who do we have next? Uh, Mary Levin. Okay, Mary, welcome. Okay, Mary, you can talk. You can unmute yourself. So, um, Mary Lavin, 10126 South Judith Place, Oak Creek, Wisconsin. I uh, just wanted to comment on, uh, I think it would be a very good idea to have some type of get together between the uh, truck country, their developers and the neighborhood of Judith Place. Um, also, I just wanted to say that um, after tonight's meeting, uh, these three pieces of three lots turning into one lot. It's a large piece of property. Um, just want to remind them that the south side is the only side that's residential. It would be nice if there would be some type of a buffer because um, it seems like there's going to be quite a bit of noise and lights. Um, Truck Country actually operates seven days a week, uh, five of those days until midnight at night. That's uh, a little concerning. And uh, just want to make sure that they take into consideration uh, that um, light industrial and residential should stay separate. And uh, also keep in mind the wetlands and um, the billboard. Um, they actually used to access and maintain the billboard at the end of Judith Place. But once they put in Ridgeview Drive on the north end, uh, they've been coming in and maintaining that billboard from the other direction because it's shorter. Um, thank you for um, uh, giving me the time to speak. Oh, not a problem, Mary. And and, and you're right. Uh, we can we can work. I'm sure Chris will be amenable to that meeting, and we can pull something together and try to take care of all the questions at once. But it was mentioned that there'll be some substantial landscape to the south. Um, as we are doing these developments, believe it or not, we're actually very very sensitive to the light pollution, and noise pollution, and um, you know, every time we do one, the next one reaps the benefit of what we learned in the last one. So uh, we will do our best to protect the neighborhood. As we Thank do. you. I appreciate that. Um, this seems to be the only business in that light industrial loop uh, going seven days a week at this time. It's uh, just yeah. a little concerning because it's also going to be the closest one to our little neighborhood. Yes. And uh, that that's a good point to bring up. Um, we just recently did one and question came up about hours of operation and uh, we're all a little bit stumped at council on that one. So, okay. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Uh, Nick, anyone else? Yeah. Uh, there's three more. So let me take Mary off. Okay. Um, there's no name listed, but whoever's calling in on the phone, you are able to talk. You can hit star nine to talk. We will need your name and address for the record, please. Hello? Yes. Hello? Yes. Hi. My name is Bob Tupper. You hearing me? Yes, got you, Bob. Okay. Uh, I live at 10218 South Judith Place, and I've been listening to the meeting, and uh, I don't have a problem with Trunk Country building a property north of uh, our little neighborhood here, but I do agree with Mary that there probably would be a good idea to have a meeting between all the parties involved so we could, you know, air out everything. But uh, my big concern is obviously I did hear that there won't be any attachment from Judith place to the property. It'll remain a dead end street, but it would be nice to have some kind of noise barrier or light barrier for the residents down our street here. So um, I guess that's, that's my comment at this point. Okay. Thank you, Bob. 
Well, you're welcome. Thank you for giving me the chance to uh, uh, voice my opinion. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, Nick, next. Christopher Johns, you've been a lot to talk. Thank you. Uh, I think Brian really summarized it well. Uh, I want to. Oh, Chris, can we get your name in? Oh, Chris, uh, Christopher Epstein. Johns. I, I, I'm with Epstein Union Architects. I'm uh, representing the project. Uh, my, my address is 333 East Chicago Street, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 53202. Thank you. And uh, we would welcome to have a, a neighborhood meeting to, uh, to suss out uh, some of the design elements. Uh, we are clearly uh, aware and conscientious of the impacts to the community. Um, I think Brian uh, touched on a lot of the topics very well. We are focusing on uh, a landscape buffer on the Southern property line. I just wanted to touch base on that to address Mary's concern, concern on that and uh, look forward to having further conversations. Okay, thank you, Chris. Uh, for Alderman Guzikowski, uh, you know, we can talk offline about how you wanna handle this meeting. Uh, we do have limited space the socially distance at city hall, masks are still required, uh, but the council chambers might be an appropriate place depending on the size of the neighborhood and uh, number of participants. So we can look into that. So. Yep, that sounds like a plan. Thank you. Okay. Um, Nick, before I go to commission, anybody else? Oh, we have one more. Okay. Kaylee, you're up to talk. Hi, uh, my name is Kaylee Kujak. I live at 10108 South Judith Place. I am literally the very last house on Judith Place. So I would be the actual direct neighbor. Um, I've been very nervous and being on this call, I feel a little bit relieved. I would like to meet with um, all the parties because I do have young children and I want to know what their plans are in advance because this is affecting my life and my children's future being here at the end of Judith Place and I do have concerns about the wetland and the plans so the sooner we could do that would be the better for some of us if that is at all possible. Okay um, we will work at it along with with the aldermen of the district uh, and uh, the applicants to, to try to pull something together here uh, in the very near future. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, now I believe that might have been the last person. Just a yep. double check. Thank you, Nick. Uh, we'll go to the commission. We'll start with Commissioner Chandler. I do have a question for Carrie. Uh, can you provide a little more information in regards to the billboard access easement, just the, the challenges with uh, this item, why the recommendation is to either uh, remove it or move it. So this is actually coming from internal conversations that we are not in support of maintaining that billboard. And when I say maintaining, meaning that it would remain on the property. Um, However, I think we can talk about relocating that billboard. And I would recommend, if at all possible, that we do not move that billboard closer to the residential portion. Um, but that's not a topic for discussion tonight. Obviously, that would be something that we would have to talk to the applicants about um, and, and kind of go forward with the planning for this. I agree that showing the existing easement and the existing billboard location is accurate for the certified survey map showing the existing conditions on the ground. If there is any way that we can um, no, put any kind of notation on here that the easement may be modified, uh, that might be something that we can talk about, but I, I am understanding of the concerns that we are showing existing conditions on the ground right now. We can certainly work with the applicant with regard to the location and whether or not there's any way we can eliminate that billboard altogether. Um, it is something that the city is looking for uh, when these types of redevelopments come up uh, to eliminate those billboards 
whenever we possibly can, if we can. Um, they're kind of these things that have been in, a, in, around, in and around for a while now. So there are some challenges to that. I'm not sure if that fully answered your question, but the long and short of it is, uh, this is showing existing conditions. So therefore it is accurate. Uh, and we can continue to work with the applicant on the issue and try and come to a resolution that is uh, amenable to all parties. Thank you, Terry. Okay, um, Fred? No, I don't have any questions at this time. Don? Um, no questions right now. Uh, Chris? Uh, actually, as a, as a um, comes to the, the, CA, the CSM that we're here tonight to talk about, I, I fully uh, support these changes here. Um, I realize that this will be a, a bit of a change for the neighbors on Judith Place, but I do support uh, the CSM and I do support uh, the, the work that the uh, truck country wants to bring in. And I know um, I'm fairly confident that they are going to be a good neighbor and understand that that Judith Place and 20th, you know, they haven't had a neighbor down here in a long time or that close, I should say. Uh, so the fact that they're not going to have any access from Judith Place to uh, to this property has um, given me a lot of uh, less anxiety. Um, but we also have a lot other things to work through as a, a light pollution. Um, Berming, uh, and, and then the noise pollution that we'll work through. Uh, but there are certainly ways to um, take care of all that and, and still coexist with uh, the neighbors on Judith Place. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chris. Uh, Greg? Uh, no questions on the CSM portion. I'm, I'm okay with it. Thank you. Okay, Don? Nothing for me. Matt? No questions on the CSM. Thank you. Uh, Christine? Uh, nothing here for now. Thanks. Okay. Um, as far as my questions go, I actually, I just got a comment. You know, there was, there was some talk about the wetlands and our engineering staff will deal with that uh, when the portion comes. Uh, you know, it's not like they're going to get it. I shouldn't say that. And sometimes wetlands can be... Um, relocated or eliminated. Matt, if you have any comments, if I'm getting it wrong, but uh, that will be addressed. Engineering always takes care of that as, uh, as well as the stormwater plan uh, going forward. So uh, right right now, it's just important to note it on the map. Uh, Carrie, in, in condition three, I guess this is my question. I, I agree with everything that's been said and I know it's kind of a work in progress. Do we make a note that if, if we leave it in that the billboard access easement um, is, is not approved and may possibly be eliminated or relocated, or do we just strike three altogether? What if, you know, the applicant Brian mentioned taking three out altogether, what does that do for us? I don't want to put staff in a funny position. I think that eliminating that condition is, I think that's okay. Um, and we can certainly work through the issues prior to proceeding with additional reviews by the plan commission. Um, it is something that staff is very concerned about. Um, there has been mentioned that it is not supported. Um, so if there's any way that we can eliminate that, that's prior or that's, Preference number one, and obviously preference number two would be talking about relocating it to an appropriate location on the property. Um, and that's certainly something that we can talk through as part of the, uh, again, the, the subsequent reviews and the plans that will be presented. So I think that staff would be okay with eliminating number three at this point. It is showing the existing conditions on the CSM and that's I think we get into a muddy situation, actually, if we start trying to wordsmith something that would say may or could be relocated or terminated. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, I just don't want to cause a problem for anybody because as uh, Mr. Randall had stated, you know, the McCoy group 
bought the land, but it came with it. They don't actually control that contract. So it's, it's kind of a different thing. Like when we had cell towers or cell units on water towers and things of that nature, when it came time to move things. So I understand there's some complications and they don't control those contracts. Uh, I think that's what Mr. Randall said. So I, I don't want to complicate it from anybody's point of view. Exactly. It is a complicated issue or a challenging issue that will probably require more conversation before we can get a resolution. Um, rather than trying to ham it out, hammer it out right now, I think we should just eliminate that condition and proceed with uh, with going uh, as, a, as presented with the CSM and staff will continue to work with the applicant on this, this issue. So hopefully okay. we'll get to a resolution or at least on our way to a resolution before we come back to the plan commission with the next review. Okay, but you are comfortable with three being eliminated. I'm comfortable with three being eliminated with the understanding that we are still gonna be talking about this with the, uh, the subsequent plans. Um, yes, this is showing existing conditions and it, it will just cause confusion to try and wordsmith something for inclusion on the CSM regarding this easement right now without knowing exactly what is going to be required in order to either change or eliminate that easement right now. Okay, so just eliminate it. Don't try to say, you know, the billboard access will go on to further discussions between the applicant and the city. Mr. Mayor, I just struck, uh, I'll, I'll read when we get to the motion because it's in my district. I would, I would just strike number three and then um, make number four and five, uh, three and four on, on the uh, conditions in the okay. motion. Okay, uh, enough said then. Okay, is there any other discussion? Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor? Mayor? Yes. Just, I would like to point out that I would work with staff and, um, uh, and the applicant to uh, uh, set up a, uh, a, a meeting uh, that we could all discuss uh, the information when it works best for, for them all. Okay. Sounds good, Chris. Thank you. Um, I don't think fire has any issues concerning this uh, whatsoever, but I'll politely ask assistant chief Havy, anything. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you know, we, you know, we did initially look at Judith place uh, to reserve that right for emergency access, but after the further review um, with the, the route access we have in where we're satisfied and will not require any emergency access through Judith place. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Um, with that being said, uh, we'll look for a motion. Kuzikowski makes a motion at the plan commission recommends at common council that the certified survey map submitted by Jim Kane from truck country, uh, McCoy group for the properties at 997 B 120 and 140 South 20th street be approved with the following conditions. One, that the official map amendment proposal is approved by the Common Council prior to recording the certified survey map. Two, that all required easements are shown on the map prior to recording. Three, that all wetland delineation dates are court corrected prior to recording. And Alderman Guzikowski? I yes. don't mean to interrupt, but actually the wetland delineation dates have been corrected. So we can eliminate number four as well. Okay, will do. Then number three would be that all tactical corrections, including, but not limited to spelling errors, minor coordinate geography uh, corrections and corrections required for compliance with the municipal code and Wisconsin statutes are made prior to recording. Two for seconds. Uh, roll call starting with Alderman Lark. Lark, aye. Kavich, aye. Guzikowski, aye. Aldani, aye. Seepert, aye. Chandler, aye. Hannah, aye. Sullivan, aye. Hello, aye. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate all the hard work there on that one. Uh, Item 5D is uh, consideration of a conditional use permit, and this is submitted by 
Milwaukee Area Technical College right here in Oak Creek. And it is for some solar arrays on the property at 6665 South Howell. Uh, Carrie. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. For those who are not familiar with what is being proposed, it's actually a small solar farm, if you will. Um, it's three rows on approximately one acre of the MATC property interior to the site. And the solar energy collectors are actually going to be ground mounted and that's they're considered accessory in the code, which is why the conditional use permit is required. Um, for clarification purposes, should this have been uh, proposed as a uh, roof mounted solar array, we might not be talking right now. Um, those are considered uh, something that is approved as a permitted use, but anything that is ground mounted needs to have a review and approval by the plan commission. So just in case anybody was wondering why we don't review all of these, it, it's because of the ground mounting situation. So with that, uh, this is the proposed location, again, interior to the MATC site. It's just north of their truck um, repair and uh, uh, their truck instruction facility. You can see that, <laughs> excuse me, Immediately to the west is their semi-truck parking uh, lot, and that's related to the program. This is just an open grass area right now. They are proposing to enclose this with an eight foot tall uh, black coated security fence. So this will be secure. Um, this is not the extent of what it will look like. This is just an idea showing a much larger site, obviously, of what these solar arrays would look like. On the bottom left, that's showing kind of their configuration that they proposed um, as part of this. There are three kind of uh, uh, slants, if you will, diagonals, directions. I'm not sure exactly what the nomenclature is, but anyway, the configuration is showing what the tilt of those panels will end up being. And it could be any one of those three. On the bottom right, that's not how they look. They're not cubicle, but it's just showing you what a panel actually looks like. Um, and there are some dimensions that have been included as part of your packet, but we're not gonna get into that today. Uh, staff has no objections to it. And in fact, there is a suggested motion for approval on the screen. Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Carrie. Um, before we go to the commission, do we have um, anybody from MATC or uh, a representative that wants to speak, Nick? Uh, currently no hands raised. Oh, okay. Uh, then we will go right to the commission and we'll start with uh, Christine. Um, I have no question. It looks good actually. So no question. Thank you. No question. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Matt. Nothing. Thank you. Okay. Dawn. No, nothing for me. Uh, Greg. No questions. Thank you. Uh, Chris. Uh, nothing for me either. Uh, Don? No questions. Fred? No questions. Uh, Chaucey? I do have a question for the applicant. Is there someone online that we can speak to? Yes, we do have a hand raised. Wonderful. Awesome. Uh, so my question is, uh, for these solar energy collectors, um, are these being put up uh, solely for energy purposes or for the studies of the students? Oh, I'm sorry. <clears throat> this is Dan Steiner. I'm a representative from Arch Electric. We're a Plymouth Bay solar contractor, uh, 1237 Pilgrim uh, Avenue, uh, Plymouth, Wisconsin, 53073. Um, so they are both. Um, so they are active, live working solar panels it will offset the existing building's energy load. So they'll see some annual energy savings uh, through monthly utility bills. They will also be studied for classroom instruction purposes. Um, so yeah, they fill both buckets. Oh, that's great news. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, just, just a couple of questions from me kind of, um, on the underside, on the base of these, they're going to be pole mounted. Uh, do you actually put purlins into the ground? Do they sit on a foundation? Do they sit right on the grass? Uh, how do they maintain the landscape underneath them? Because they're going to be at a height of 14 feet. 
Sure. Yeah. So as you can see in that standard configuration, that's, that's your most typical. Um, basically what we do is we drive a, a C channel um, that's about approximately 14 feet. We drive it eight feet into the ground and have a reveal height of that C channel about six feet. From there, you put a cross member on to a tilt angle of around 25 degrees. These are fixed tilt systems, so they, they don't move, they don't track the sun or anything, they face south all the time. Um, the panels are mounted on that purlin um, with a bolt configuration. And um, the top side of the panel um, can get around that uh, close to 14 feet, the lower edge should maintain a three foot clearance off the ground. Um, they will be filling the area with some rocks in there to allow some type of reflectivity for uh, the backside gain because these are bifacial panels. It's kind of part of the studying that they're doing. It's a solar for schools program. Okay, so so it'll be up to MATC to maintain. I, I guess there'll be lawn under there. Uh, there'll be like a like a white gravel rock. Um, oh, like TV. Yeah, for reflectivity purposes. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess that's about it for my questions. So it's just curious, a little bit of educational for me. Sure, no problem. Okay. Um, are there any other questions or comments going forward? Okay. Uh, seeing none then, uh, motion on 5D. Kuzikowski makes a motion that the Planning Commission recommends that the Common Council approves a conditional use permit for solar energy collectors on the property at 6665 South Hall Avenue after a public hearing and subject to conditions and restrictions that, are that will be prepared for the Planning Commission review at the next meeting. Oracle second. Uh, roll call starting with myself, uh, Bukevich, aye. Kuzikowski, aye. Aye. Seifert, aye. Chandler, aye. Hannah, aye. Sullivan, aye. Carrillo, aye. Lorik, aye. And that will get us uh, to adjournment. Uh, before adjournment, uh, just one announcement the city or Earth Day is coming up here on, well, I don't know what the exact day is, but we are doing a citywide cleanup on April 24th. Uh, so we gather, we start at City Hall and we hand out garbage bags and gloves and pickers and all the stuff needed to pick up all the winter litter that's accumulated underneath the snow. And we spread out throughout various parks and areas in the city. If we can get civic groups or just citizens to volunteer, so if any of you are looking to kill about three, four hours Saturday morning and want to join me on the 24th, I will be at City Hall picking up garbage in the preserve. So uh, mark your calendars. It's always a fun time. So um, does anyone have anything else they'd yeah, like to bring, bring your boots. Yeah, bring your boots. Yeah. Yeah, Chris is usually uh, with me in the preserve and uh, it's amazing just what gets left behind after the winter. So. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, Mike Cavey with uh, Fire. Yes. So there is a potential prescribed burn plan for Emerald uh, Preserve. Hopefully it'll be done this week. Uh, just so you're aware and uh, community leaders and members of the commission. So it's a uh, permitted burn through the DNR. Um, so it, it's scheduled hopefully either Thursday or Friday and it might be kind of short notice, but we'll publish that out through social media. Uh, just for your awareness. Oh, great, Mike. Being the mayor, I appreciate information like that. It comes in handy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Just kidding you. I know it depends on weather conditions, so yep. uh, it's good. Actually, we did take a walk through there, and uh, it, it really has overgrown over the years quite a bit. So, Yeah, I think they were planning on doing something last year, but the conditions never, never presented themselves to have it done. Yeah, understood. So... Um, Anything else, Chris, you want to plug your walk, Ron? Sure. We, uh, uh, our walk is going to be on May 23rd at uh, Lake Vista. And uh, so far we have uh, 725 people that signed up. 600 are um, adults, 
36 are children and 83 are people that are doing it either uh, remote or uh, uh, yeah, remote. So um, you can go to the website to still sign up and um, uh, we're going to have some porta potties there and we're going to have some raffles there. And uh, it's going to be a great event to talk about Huntington's disease and um, there's not a cure for it. So hopefully we can uh, at least get the word out about it to our uh, local uh, area here in Oak Creek and Franklin. Okay. And Don, I know you're a little ways off from the market, but anything you want to say? Yeah, I, this weather is doing really good for the farmers, but yeah, we don't start till June 12th. Okay, great. Uh, and as always, thank you to the staff. You make the, the meetings so much easier. You're always very well prepared and you give us the right material. So um, thank you all. Nick, thank you for the effort there on the IT side. Um, appreciate you getting us up and streaming. So, And I do have some. Oh, Don. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't know if anybody on Saturday went by West Middle School for the shredding and the electronics uh, <laughs> recycling. I got there. Uh, <laughs> I didn't get there. I got. <laughs> I was about in line, uh, pretty far down the road. Uh, by the time I got up there, uh, there was a gentleman. I I recognized him. I do not know his name, and he had to turn everyone away, car by car. I kind of felt bad for him. It was kind of rainy. Uh, they said they were already full, both the shredding and the electronics, and they were going to try to reschedule something. I don't know if uh, it'll happen. On that. We usually do it twice a year, and we'll probably do another one in the fall. Um, I was there as well as Chris, uh, and then we went to the front, and we were they, they filled up with paper. It was amazing. Uh, overall, there were over 718 cars. Uh, going forward, we've you know we've had some input from the people that worked it. Uh, we had, I had one gentleman from Delafield who drove in, wasn't very happy. We had to turn him away. Um, kind of a funny story connected with that, but this ain't the place for it. Um, but again, we'll probably start to limit it to residents because um, there were a lot of residents that didn't get the opportunity because other people came and uh, use the service of the city. And there is a cost associated with the city to it. So. Was, was that your was that you and Chris? I seen uh, use your celebrity and fly up past all the all the cars in line and just cut in front of everyone. No, I myself got stuck oh. in line as well. I had an appointment in the morning and I waited about twenty minutes. But then I st I, I worked the event and Chris was there bright and early, kind of helped setting it up. So I, I really didn't mind it. You know, it was no big deal. But I, I was uh, just kind of happy to see it was getting because I've never been there before and I was like I, I couldn't believe how popular that was. Um. Yeah. Normally Actually, the, the spring one is normally the spring one is the big one for sure. Uh, but given the fact that everybody was shut down last year, um, nobody was collecting anything. That's that's you know, you have the double whammy spring and then a whole year of people uh being home and doing their um uh searching their cabinets for all their stuff to get rid of and shred. You know, there is a service in town, Rams Recycling on Marquette, and they, they'll, if you're a resident, they will take your shredding and they may even take the electronics too. So you may want to check that out. I want to say it's about 400 West Marquette. Yeah, that, that's what I had. I had a couple computers, some old iPhones. That's, and uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, that, that's great though. I'm, I'm glad to see their uh, the residents are taking advantage of it. It, it, it's it's a really really popular event and, and citywide you know maybe we can talk about other alternatives as well but uh just through our follow-up conversations i learned of rams just recently so uh with that if there's nothing else uh motion to adjourn somebody it uh, moves to adjourn at 7 13. paper seconds roll call Oh, starting with Chris. Who's the Koski? Oh, uh, Old Donny, I, excuse me. Deeper and I. Chandler, I. Anna, I. Sullivan, I. Rillo, I. Lorik, I. Bukavich, I. Okay. I have one thing Gary, before everybody. Yes. Me. Um, 
It's my understanding, Mr. Mayor, that there will be a decision made at one of the upcoming common council meetings, but I've been instructed to inform everybody to be prepared for an in-person meeting for the very first May plan commission meeting. So it's May 11th. Okay. Um, our emergency order is set to run out May 8th and discussion at the council meeting would be to extend or to start the phase back. So um, I do believe Carrie's right. I think that was the favor of most of the councilmen to start to go back. So again, we can socially distance in there. We do it at council as well. We can accommodate people. Uh, we'll still practice if, if you're comfortable with that. Um, and again, you are more than welcome to wear the mask, even if a mandate is gone or any restrictions out, please uh, don't feel you have to not wear it. So, and I will have, I do have kind of a, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, two options in a diagram for socially distance if you do not feel comfortable all sitting at the dais. Um, we can discuss that offline, but I wanted to make sure that everybody was aware uh, ahead of time to be prepared for May 11th. Thank you. And, and commissioners, again, if, if you have uh, some concerns, uh, you know, please address Carrie um, uh, in, the, in the next coming week or two. And so she can uh, begin to plan, a, plan accordingly. Okay. Thank you, everybody. That is it. Uh, everybody enjoy the week. Talk to you all soon. Thank you.